What's going on, smart people? This is going to be part one of a two-part video deriving the Lorentz transformation. And the reason I'm making this a two-part video is because I really want to take some time to motivate why we need the Lorentz transform in the first place. And we're going to do that by showing how if we use a more intuitive means of transforming in between reference frames using the Galilean transformation, we run into some trouble, we get the wrong answer, we need something more powerful. And then in the next video, we'll get into the actual derivation itself. Einstein wasn't the first person to understand that things move relative to other things. A child can understand that, or a 16th century astronomer. And that's exactly what Galileo did. Galileo said, and I quote, if you are in a jet airplane traveling, you can calculate how far it goes, assuming it starts at zero, by taking how fast it's moving times how long it's been traveling for. In other words, it's velocity times time, right? If you're traveling 50 miles per hour for one hour, you have gone 50 miles. Now, if you don't start at zero, if you start off a little bit displaced, then you just add that displacement to it. We'll call that x prime. And this whole combination here, we will call x. In other words, you can transform into the reference frame of the person observing the moving jet airplane into the reference frame of the person inside of the airplane with this Galilean transformation. He also said that, well, if it's moving purely in the x direction, that means there's no relative motion up or down or in and out, which would imply that uh, y is equal to, actually, you know what, before we do this, let's go ahead and invert this equation so that we got the primes on one side, the unprimes on the other, which would mean that x prime is equal to x minus vt. And now we'll, we'll consider the whole y and z part. Well, if there's no relative motion up or down or in and out, then that would imply that y prime equals y, z prime equals z, and it's reasonable to assume that time didn't depend on your reference frame, which would mean that t prime equals t. This is intuitive, it's easy, and it's, it's wrong. In order to demonstrate why this transformation fails, let's consider an example where we have a spherical light bulb that you flip the switch and it starts going off in all directions. The light does anyways. Let's go ahead and draw this in some coordinate system. So be our z-axis, y, and x. Here's our light bulb, and it is giving light off in all directions. Well, this sphere of light, the radius of that sphere, is just going to be how fast light is times how long it's going for, right? This radius is just going to be ct. And then we can write the equation of a sphere, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to c squared t squared, right? The radius of the sphere is just ct. We can write this a little bit differently as x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus c squared t squared equals zero. Okay. Next what I want to do is I want to have some relative motion thrown in the mix. So this is someone who's observing the sphere go off with no relative motion relative to the sphere. Now let's have someone moving relative to it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in this Galilean transform. So this is the same sphere. Physics shouldn't have a preferred reference frame, which means if we plug in this transformation, we should still get the same physics. And let's see if we do. So this will be like our S, our S reference frame, and then we want to introduce some S prime reference frame where there's the relative motion. In other words, we'll have X prime squared plus Y prime squared, uh, let's call it minus C squared T prime squared equals zero. And now we're going to substitute in our Galilean transformation, which would give us, let's see, so that's gonna be X minus VT squared, plus y squared plus z squared uh, minus c squared t squared. And this should be equal to this equation, right? If the physics is the same, this is the same event going on, this should be equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus c squared t squared. But when we foil this term out here, uh, minus 2xvt plus v squared t squared plus all of this stuff. Everything matches up perfectly except for this term here. We don't get the left hand side equals the right hand side. This doesn't work. So 
fine, the Galilean transformation doesn't give us the right physics. But is there one that does? Can we find a transformation that will end up preserving this relationship for any arbitrary reference frame we throw at it? Well, in order to find that, uh, we need to relax our assumptions a little bit. So let, let me erase some of this. And this is going to be the last part of the video. And we'll pick it up in the next one. Instead of assuming this transformation rule, let's relax a little bit. Let's assume that x prime is just equal to some constant times x, let's call it a1, plus some other constant, a2, times time. Um, again, I mean, there still is no relative motion in y prime or z prime, so there's still no reason to think that that changes. Uh, so we'll say that y prime still equals y, z prime still equals z. Uh, but we are going to be a little, a little cautious about this thing right here, because there was a mixed term when we foiled everything out. There was an x times a t. So something fuzzy can be happening here as well. So we'll try to account for that by letting t prime equal some constant we'll call b1 times x plus b2 times t. So what we're going to do in the next video is we're going to try to solve for these coefficients. And in doing so, we will uncover the Lorentz transform. It is hella important not to just go through the math and get the right answer, but to see what led to people looking for something different in the first place. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments section if you did, and I'll see you guys there. One thing I neglected to mention was that the Galilean transform fails for more than just this example. If you take, say, Maxwell's wave equation, for example, it is not invariant under the Galilean transform. You get different answers. You get different physics for ENM if you try to use the Galilean transform. So there's, there's more motivation than just this for moving on to something more sophisticated, which I'm excited to get into in the next video. Okay, bye.